This is our main manufacturing facility here, okay? Now this first uh, table, this is actually our truss table. This is a 119 foot MyTech truss table. And we can build as many trusses to fill up the length of it or one large one. I came out here last summer and I was just walking through the doors just to come out and I, I looked on the table and I thought the truss took up the whole table. I couldn't believe it. I had to go over and talk to the guys. The truss was 83 feet long. They had six guys on it and it took them eight to 10 minutes to build. But before we can actually build your trusses, we got to cut all the components. So that's where we're going to go back inside to the office to the uh, product design team. They're the ones that are actually going to be inputting all the information into the computer system of what's going to be built. Now all that information gets stored onto a server out here so the equipment knows exactly what we're going to be cutting. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this truss table of the trusses that we're actually going to be building. Everything is pre-cut. Uh, everything's a spruce pine fir. It's a two greater better. Now as you walk by you may di notice different color coatings on this as well. You may notice a, a black, a red, or a green, but that's more of just batching uh, for a, a design end of things or a building. Now up here, come on up folks, you can actually take a closer look here. Now as soon as all the components are cut, they're going to be put onto those carts. I want to direct your attention to right behind you, right down there, you're going to see that black computer system. That, that computer system, that is called the Vertex Laser System. That gives a layout of this entire truss table. It's broken into three zones of, so it allows us to build one large truss or a series of them. But that computer system over there is linked to these six black boxes. Now that's actually going to project uh, an image of the truss that we're building. Now this table has two modes. The first mode is called jig mode. Now jig mode is we're going to line the lasers up with the crosshairs of these pucks here. See the crosshairs? They're going to line that up giving that, making sure the bottom and top cords are nice and uh, straight, and making sure so they're going to set the jig so they know what the truss is going to look like. Then they're going to come over here to this triangle here. You're going to see that triangle? They can control the computer system with that tape measure. They're going to switch it to what is called build mode. Now build mode tells them exactly what that truss is going to be manufactured out of. Whether it's our standard 2x4 top and bottom cords with 2x4 webs, or this particular truss is actually a 2x6 top and bottom cord with 2x4 webs. Or, say for instance, remember I talked a lot about those uh, attic trusses over a garage where that bottom cord is part of your floor deck? So if this truss were a 2, or the bottom cord was supposed to be a 2x10 or a 2x12, those lights tell them exactly what size the material is and where it's going to go. Not to mention these truss plates. Uh, you'll notice over here um, in these boxes you're going to see these uh, truss plates. Doug's actually going to hold one up for you. Um, these come in all different shapes and sizes. You'll notice those are all going to be predetermined in our product design team, all depending on wind load and snow load to where we're actually going to ship the truss. Because we ship to such a large market from Michigan to, to uh, Massachusetts, the same uh, truss going to the different areas, we're going to require different wind and snow loads. But what we're going to do is we're going to preset those truss plates and you'll notice the lasers tell them exactly what size and the shape and where they're going to be going. So they're going to preset those truss plates in the designated location on both the top and the bottom. So what they'll do is they'll lift this bottom cord up a little bit, they'll slide that uh, bottom uh, truss in or that bottom truss plate in and everything's going to be set. As well as the gentlemen out here are going to be cross-referencing a printed copy of that truss to kind of make sure that everything is kosher with the computer system as well as uh, the components. Now at this point we would take our, you'll note, uh, take your attention to this roof tracker. This is a MyTech press. It's a two-ton press. We will press over top of this to press those plates in. Now that first press is going to be about 75 percent completion at the top plate and 55 percent completion at the bottom plate. The reason for that is we're actually going to press it again before it leaves the building. So as soon as that's pre-pressed, you're going to notice these rollers in between the tables. We're going to lift that truss up out of this jig and we're going to roll it over to, these rollers are normally rolling, and it's going to take it out through. There's a blue hood over there. That's our secondary press. It's going to press those plates into complete 100%. Okay. Now when that truss leaves the building, we've still got a couple more things we're going to do. We're going to mark the common end of the truss that came out of the jig. We're going to be ensuring proper quantity for loading 
as well as any gable end truss. As I mentioned outside, we're actually going to be applying your sidewall sheathing too. So again, trying to speed up that process so you're not 30 feet in the air having to do that. Uh, on average, something like this, uh, the trusses take anywhere from 6 to 10 minutes to assemble right here. So again, they can actually uh, keep moving pretty steadily as well as this menu bar, this triangle, they can actually move this truss on the table left and right, up or down if it uh, needs to be positioned differently as well as they can track the process, progress and know how many more trusses they have left in that sequence to do. So this, uh, this table here is talking to that computer system as well. One of the things too that I didn't mention is uh, all the trusses, they're actually going to be, you're going to have uh, what is called a uh, different uh, uh, codes or uh, flyers that are on there. For instance, about bracing and uh, uh, do not, uh, you know, cut unless you actually have a uh, have an approval from uh, from us. The reason for that is, is these trusses are structurally engineered. We're not saying that they uh, they can't be altered or anything like that. Say, for instance, you got a field change. All we're saying is, you just need to notify us first and get an approval before doing so. Uh, for instance, when you get into like wiring and things of that nature, we just don't. You can't be, you know, drilling into the bottom cords and things of that nature. Now follow me over here please. What you'll see when you walk by is you'll actually see the computer screen that the Sawyer's going to, he can actually control uh, this saw. He can expand it out or he can bring it in and as well as he can control the angles of these blades. But literally you can see this overhead door would lift up, okay. We're going to bring a unit, unit of material that we have in already one of our outbuildings uh, undercover. We're going to be bringing it into here. The Sawyer will actually go through it, mark on it, making sure everything's good to go. And then he's going to put it onto these forks, okay? He's going to line this material onto these forks, and he's going to send it through. So you can see, you can take a look at the blades, five different angle cuts all in one pass through, okay? As soon as it's cut, you're going to see this conveyor belt at the bottom. That conveyor belt will actually take that scrap material and dump it into that dumpster. We still have about two dump truckloads a day that we actually have to donate to uh, Paul Bunyan. We actually have, a, you'll see the group of material, the scrap that we donate to them. And what they do is they actually grind that up into playground mulch used into a lot of the schools. So it is taking another uh, green aspect and trying to uh, have a better place for that to be. Um, so literally two dump truck loads a day. But again, utilizing all the, uh, the, the cutting and uh, the panelization of the trusses and the wall panels, that's a cost that's absorbed by Barden. It's not being passed on to you as a consumer or a homeowner and having uh, all that scrap to, to tend with on your job site. And again, it keeps your job site nice and clean because you have a little bit less waste as well. This saw, this saw will do most 98% of all your truss component cutting. Now we'll walk over here, take a look at our secondary saw. This will do those smaller parts and pieces, those, things, those uh, components uh, less than 30 inches or with a quantity less than two. But this one here is called the Apollo Mango Tech. It's fully automated. It's a little bit different than that saw. This has a visual monitor that will show them what that component's going to look like, as well as has, has an automatic stop here. So it'll automatically set to the length of what he needs to cut. The Sawyer doesn't have to do any measuring or set any angles. This saw will automatically set to the appropriate angle. Then when he makes his cut and he puts it back, it'll automatically set to the next angle for him and adjust any type of length to it. Takes all the air right out of the equation. He's going to put them onto these carts here, which again will be taken over to the other side of that truss table, and they can actually start the, uh, the fabrication there. I would love to have one of those saws in my garage trying to work <laughs> some of the, the smaller tasks that I have. But as you filter down through here, you can actually see how some of the carts are, uh, how everything is pre-cut. These are, these are all things that are pre-cut by this Apollo Mango Tech. But things like this, components like that, things that are really small, they have a, dot, a lot of different angles, all, all previously cut. Now also when you filter down to this next station, this is actually where we build your gable ladders and outlooker roofs, things that I was pointing out on that, uh, that truss load earlier. But this is where this all takes place down here. Now right here, this is uh, 
the, the overhangs, your gable ladders, your outlooker roofs, and uh, gable returns, they're not structural, they're more cosmetic. But again, we want to speed up that process and pre-build these things. Nothing automated, but we have just a regular chop saw here, and where we're actually going to be doing the cutting and the fabrication of things like this. Things that are kind of cosmetic that'll go, you know, kind of give you a return on your, uh, your, your big gables, kind of break it up and give it more design, decorative features.